Hello. I'm Dr. Miguel Gonzalez, President of Reasons for Faith International Ministries and your Bible teacher here on Truth to Live By. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for joining us and I want to extend an invitation for you to join us each and every week at this same time and on this same station. It is our prayer that God is using these programs to minister to you wherever you might be in your spiritual life. I suppose with Father's Day here, you, this, is, this is the type of message that you would, uh, you would hear, but this is actually a message that could be delivered any time of the year because uh, it's, it's an important message and, and, and it has to deal with the characteristics of a good father. What, what goes into making a father a good father? What does the Bible say are the characteristics that make a man a good father? Father, We have plenty of biological fathers out there today, but we don't have a lot of good fathers who truly invest themselves in nurturing those precious gifts that they've been given by God that we call children. Today we're going to spend a little bit of time pointing out some of the biblical characteristics of a good father. But before we do that, we're going to open up in a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for the fact that we have your word that instructs us in all these areas of life that in your eyes are very important. We know that one day when we come before you, you will be holding us accountable as to what we did as parents, as fathers, as mothers. You will not be asking us about our careers or our houses or our cars or our money you will be asking about our sons and daughters and what we did to raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Father, we thank you. We pray that the Holy Spirit would open the eyes and ears of our hearts and minds so that as we look at your word today, he may teach us truth and teach us how to apply that truth to our lives. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I read that Billy Graham once said, a father is one of the most unsung, unpraised, and unnoticed, yet one of the most valuable assets in our society. Now we would of course say the same thing about a mother, but this is Father's Day. Do you understand that whether you're a believer or not, if you have had the privilege of having a child, you will one day answer to God as to what you did in raising that child to become the person that God intended him or her to be. Do you understand that as a father, you have been called to invest yourself in your children more than in anything else outside of your relationship to God Himself. And as I said in my opening prayer, do you understand that the day that you come before God, whether you are a believer in the Lord Jesus or not, you will come before God and He will ask you about your son and daughter by name and ask you, and it won't be a rhetorical question, and though he knows the answer, he wants to hear it from you, he will ask you about your child. What are some of the characteristics that the Bible points out are part of a, the making of a good father? It is true that the God intended for fathers, in many respects, to be breadwinners. That does not mean that he necessarily has to be the only breadwinner, but he is charged with 
looking out for the physical needs of his family, but the Bible also says to us that the Father is to be much more than just the breadwinner. He's to be an overall provider. He is to be a protector. He is to be a guide, a teacher, a disciplinarian. Listen, he is to be to his family a pastor, a pastor, an overseer, a shepherd of his flock. By the looks of things today, fathers have lost sight of the fact that they have certain responsibilities to those that are called their children. I want to look at Proverbs chapter 4, and I will make reference to some of the things we read there, but not entirely. But listen to what Proverbs chapter 4, and I'll start in verse 1, says. Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. Now this is, of course, the assumption here is that the father is, one, instructing, and two, that what he's instructing is worth even listening to. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. When I was a boy in my father's house, still tender, and an only child of my mother, he taught me and said, Lay hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget my words or swerve from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Though it cost all you have, get understanding. Esteem her, and she will exalt you. Embrace her, and she will honor you. She will set a garland of grace on your head and present you with a crown of splendor. Listen, my son, accept what I say, and the years of your life will be many. I guide you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Do not set your foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evil men. Do we understand as fathers our responsibility to teach our children wisdom? Do we understand as fathers our responsibility to teach our offspring truth? objective truth, absolute truth, and the application of that truth. Based on what we just read in Proverbs, I'm going to argue that one of the characteristics of a good father, and I'm going to say this is the first one in my mind, is this, that father if he's going to be a good father, that father has trusted Christ as his Lord and Savior. Listen, you as a father cannot do for your children what Proverbs just told you you ought to do. Because as a father, not in a personal relationship with Christ, you yourself do not know truth. You yourself are not wise in God's ways. See, the wisdom of God comes through a personal relationship with Him. Only when you know the truth can you teach truth. Only when you have exercised and gained wisdom and understanding can you communicate to your children that wisdom and understanding. So in my mind, the first characteristic of a good father is that he has trusted Christ as his Lord and Savior. Do you understand man 
or men, do you understand that if you are going to be the best possible husband, you have to be a believer in the Lord Jesus. You see, you can't love your spouse with that divine love until you yourself have experienced that divine love and now have within you the Spirit of God to love your spouse the way He wants you to love, with that agape love. If you want to be the best possible husband, you must be a disciple, a follower of the Lord Jesus. If you want to be a good father, in fact, if you want to be the best possible father to your children, you must have a personal relationship with Jesus. Your children ought to be able to see in you what a real father looks like. And the only way they're going to see that is if you have spent time with your Heavenly Father developing a relationship that allows your children to see a good father. But a lot of time and commitment is spent in the task of becoming a good husband and a good father. You become a better husband and a better father as you yourself grow through the process of sanctification and as you experience the Lord every day in your life. You will never be a good father or the best father that you can possibly be unless you have first, first dealt with the sin in your own life until you have first repented of that sin in your own life and until you have first come to the foot of the cross and trusted Jesus for your salvation. So in my mind, if we're going to successfully do that which Proverbs tells us we ought to do, we will first have to have been in a personal relationship with Him. Secondly, I believe that a characteristic of a good father is that he is an example in all things. Listen, we're falling apart as a society in, this, in, in, in all of these areas. Sometimes you go out into the world and, and, and you find yourself in, 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 in an environment somewhere where, where, where you're surrounded by people and that's, you know, uh, including families, and you sometimes just stand there and wonder who it is that is in, char is in charge in these homes. I mean, I, I don't know if, the, if it's that we've become so politically correct or, or what it is, but it almost seems like two-year-olds control the home. And there's nobody there to put their foot down and set the law by which a child needs to live by in order to grow up to be the person that God intended for them to be. You know this Chinese proverb, we use it all the time. One picture is worth a thousand words. And if you talk to most educators today, you will find that today it is recognized that visual, visual education is one of the most effective methods of teaching. Visual education is one of the most effective methods of teaching. So what's the point I'm making? One good, listen to me, one good example may make a greater impact than a thousand lectures. Don't do as I do, just do as I say. That does not work, folks. And that is nothing more than hypocrisy come to life in a home. One good example is worth more than a thousand lectures. Believe me when I tell you that. Therefore, a father needs to make sure that he provides an atmosphere that is conducive to good 
character development in the lives of his children. Listen to me, regardless of age, you never stop being a parent. Whether you have a one-year-old, a 10-year-old, or a 30-year-old, you are still the parent, and you are still to set the example for those children. Well, sons and daughters, even if they're adults. Let me just cover a few areas in which we ought to give a good example as fathers. We ought to be an example in reverence and worship. Our relationship to the Lord Jesus must be real. And our lives ought to demonstrate the fact that God is indeed the most important person in our lives. And we ought to be able to explain why. But if we are not examples in the areas of reverence and worship, then the Lord Jesus becomes irrelevant to our children. Do you go to church on Sunday with your children sitting in the back seat of your car all along and you're complaining about the fact that you have to go to church on Sunday? What do you think you have just communicated to your children? Better for you is just simply to give the kids the option to go to church and you stay home if you're going to down it because it's a task in your life rather than a privilege to come and corporately experience Jesus and worship Him. We need to be an example in reverence and worship. We need to be an example in obedience. How do we, where do we get off telling our children to be obedient to what we say when we are nothing but disobedient to what God tells us? God says, love one another, yet we hate more people than the people we love. God says, don't lie, yet from our mouths we utter some of the... Listen, if we don't obey our Heavenly Father, where do we get off telling our children they should be obedient? We ought to be examples of real, practical, biblical wisdom. In other words, we ought to be able to sit down and discuss with our, with our children the Word of God, interpret the Word of God for them, help them understand the Word of God, and then show them through our lives what the Word of God does for us when we start living it. It's one thing to read a nice passage from Scripture, it's altogether another thing to live that passage of Scripture, thus showing and being an example of what real practical wisdom looks like. We ought to be an example of truthfulness in speech. We ought to be an example of integrity. We ought to be an example both in attitudes and ambitions. We complain about certain things, yet our kids know the very programs we're watching on TV. What message does that communicate? If you want to be a good father, first of all, you have to be in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and secondly, you have to be an example in all things. And I will argue this point. If you are not an example in any area, or you struggle to even be an example in one area, I would ask you to consider as to whether you are in a personal relationship with Christ. Because if you're not, then you're not going to be a very good example necessarily in all areas, because God doesn't have control over your life. He's not Lord over everything. And thirdly, if you want to be a good father, one of the characteristics of a good father is that he provides proper discipline. Listen, it is our responsibility as fathers to determine from a biblical point of view 
from a biblical viewpoint what discipline is appropriate for whatever it is that requires the dispensing of discipline. Do you know that the Bible tells us that one of the reasons or one of the ways in which we know that we're loved by God is because God Himself chastens us, disciplines us? God cares for me. I am His child. And when I am out of line, God, because He loves me, He will discipline me. It is the same in the natural world. It is my responsibility to dispense discipline to my children so that they might grow up responsible citizens, productive citizens who are in a personal relationship with Christ. There is a place for discipline. I want to look at a couple of scriptures there. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4, listen to what Paul says. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the nurture and admonition or the nurture and instruction of the Lord. We are to bring our children up in the nurture and in admonition or instruction of the Lord, and sometimes that will require us dispensing the proper discipline in order to correct those things that are inconsistent with who God wants them to be. I know we live in a day and age in which we don't touch our children. A lot of people don't advocate corporal punishment. Spanking today is abusive. We don't want to scar our children. We don't want to destroy their spirit. Yet we have a generation of children today who have utterly no respect for anything because nobody has ever done something that has stopped them on their tracks to think about what it is that they're doing that is so wrong. For example, going back to Proverbs, if you look at chapter 13 in Proverbs, in verse 24, I want to read this one verse. Listen to what he says. He who spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is careful to discipline him. You have to have a personal relationship with Christ if you're going to be a good father. You have to be an example in all areas, and you have to be willing to discipline your child in a way in which it's appropriate and biblical in order to make sure that your child grows up to be the person God intended for them to be and in order for you to be indeed a good father and a good parent. Listen, in your quest to provide material benefits for your children, don't neglect to provide them with the greatest benefit of all and that is a godly father who loves the Lord Jesus and seeks to demonstrate His faith in every area of life. That is the greatest gift anybody could give their child, a godly father and mother. Father, we thank You for Your instruction. We thank You for the fact that we can be godly parents to our children by the fact that Jesus died on the cross for us, rose again, has forgiven us of our sin and has extended to us the gift of eternal life. Father, may we never lose sight of the incredible privilege that it is to have children, what a gift they are to us and what heavy responsibility we have in making sure that we're raising them and bringing them up in the nurture and instruction of the Lord. We love you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. For all of us here at Truth to Live By, we just want to let you know that it's an absolute privilege for us to be able to meet with you every single week. We want to let you know that we want to uh, make sure you join us once again each and every week at this time and on this station.
uh, so we can together study the Word of God. Uh, Truth to Live By is a ministry of Reasons for Faith International Ministries. This is a ministry committed to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ and to the defense of the historical orthodox doctrines of the Christian faith. If you are a Christian, it is our sincere prayer that God is using these programs, these messages, to speak to you, to build you up, to equip you for service so that you may be able to effectively work for Him uh, in the work of the kingdom in this lost and dying world. If you're not in a personal relationship with Christ, then you sense the Holy Spirit prompting you to make that decision even right now. You can do that simply by repeating this simple prayer after me. Father, I recognize that I am a sinner, and as such, I am spiritually dead. I confess and repent of my sin. I ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me. I also understand that there is no other name under heaven given to us by which we must be saved other than Jesus. So Lord Jesus, I trust you right now as my Lord and Savior. I pray that you would make of me a new creation. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. For it is in his name I pray, amen. I can tell you on the authority of the word of God that if you have just prayed that simple prayer sincerely from your heart, your sins have been forgiven and you are now a member of the family of God as an adopted son or adopted daughter. If you have prayed that prayer, will you please contact us and let us know of this decision you have just made? If uh, you're a Christian, we want to know how God is using this program to minister to you. Will you drop us a note or give us a call as well? It is our honest prayer that God will continue to minister to all of you, use these programs to bring glory to himself, to build the saints, equip them for service, and to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. We pray for your prayers, and we pray that you would also pray for the viewers. Share us with your family and friends so that they may become part of the Truth to Live by viewing family. God bless you, and Lord willing, we will see you once again right here on this same station at this same time next week.